I'd like to say we have a, a quorum present. To my left, Councilman Taubenberger, Councilman Greenlee, and to my right, Councilman Canona Sanchez. Um, Mr. McMonagle, can you please read the title of the first bill? Bill number oh, wait, 171. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sean, before you start. Okay. For the record, uh, bill number 170895, bill number 170896, and bill number 170. 729 and 171014 are being held from the call, at the call to sponsor. 729 is a resolution. Oh, okay. Please proceed, Mr. McGuire, please use the title of the first bill. Bill number 171001, an ordinance amending section 9-605 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Towing to revise certain requirements for participation in and provisions for administration of the rotational towing system, and to adjust the fees for tows in the rotational system all under certain terms and conditions. Mr. Kelly, please proceed to the desk. Mr. Roop, um, before we start the testimony, we also like to say bill number 170961 uh, has been listed in error and was, is not on the calendar. Um, before we start, uh, Councilwoman Sanchez. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to um, thank the administration um, and Council, Council President Clark, Council, uh, Council uh, Leader um, Greenlee, and all the others who've worked on some of this comprehensive towing um, solutions for the city of Philadelphia. I'm pleased to say that the managing directors are under the leadership of the managing director's office. We've really moved a long way. And this is one more of those uh, reform initiatives that we're, under, uh, we're going to undertake. And I particularly want to highlight the fact that the Philadelphia Independent Towers and Salvers Association um, have submitted a letter uh, additionally in support uh, of this. So I want to personally thank Mr. Root and um, Lieutenant Healy. Captain Healy now? Right? Captain. 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 I was calling you commissioner before I keep having you <laughs> I wanted to Better than lieutenant. I wanted to personally thank both of them for all their hard work on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hill, you would like to proceed? Uh, good afternoon, Councilman Squilla and committee members. My name is Captain Francis Healy, and I'm Special Advisor to Police Commissioner Ross, and I'm here to testify on behalf regarding Bill Number 171001, which is introduced by Councilwoman Sanchez. I offer testimony in support of, of this bill. This legislation makes several minor technical amendments to the city's rotational towing program. As you know, this program provides for police to dispatch a tow truck on a rotational basis from an approved list whenever a vehicle is involved in an accident that requires an emergency response or when a vehicle is disabled in the public right away. The program requires participating tow companies to abide by a series of standards, including an established fee schedule to avoid price gouging vehicle owners. The Kenny administration has been working to implement improvements to the rotational tow and to enhance the efficiency and accountability of this system with the intent of reducing price gouging and wreck chasing. As part of this effort, the Managing Director's Office is, has issued an uh, RFP earlier this year seeking proposals for a third-party towing management company that can oversee some of the administrative aspects of the rotational tow program, such as the dispatching of trucks, using innovative technology to help improve the timeliness of the response and to help ensure that the tow is being performed by the properly dispatched tow company within the guidelines and regulations of the city's program. The city is currently negotiating with a vendor and hopes to enter into a contract shortly and will be performing the outreach to the affected towers at the appropriate time uh, the system, uh, prior to the system launching. The legislation you're considering today will create the necessary amendments to section 9-605 subsection 4 to allow the city to move forward with this initiative and will allow the city to later revise the fee schedule by regulation to ensure the system will operate at no cost to the city or adversely impact the towers who are participating in the program and follow the rules. This legislation, including the revised fee schedule, would not take effect until the necessary regulation amendments are in effect. Thank you for consideration of this important legislation. Uh, which will allow us to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the rotational tow program, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are you testifying, Chris? I'm just here to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, any questions? I just have one. Um, as far as the app is concerned, do we have a, a timeline when it would be up and running? 
So I can tell you, and for the record, my name is Chris Roop. I'm Chief of Staff to the Managing Director's Office. I can tell you we're <coughs> presently in the external negotiation phase with a vendor. Um, we are continuing our conversations with the vendor, including this week. Um, once we can get the uh, provider agreement and scope of work uh, negotiated, we need to get the regulatory amendments approved, um, do some outreach to the towing industry, do some back-end um, integrations on the technical side, and we hope to have the system up and running hopefully early in 2018. Okay, great. I, I want to say, too, that it's impressive to see that we received the Philadelphia Independent Towers and Salvers Association letter supporting this, um, which is great to have everybody on the same page supporting the same program, and hopefully that'll be uh, something that the residents of the city would appreciate. Um, as, as we look through this phase, and I know the other issue is the uh, direct telling from the streets, and um, is that something possible in the future to, to look into as far as an application or another form of a program? No, we're willing to look into anything, um, as long as it's technologically feasible and administratively feasible. I can tell you, just for, for clarity purposes, that we are focusing this effort primarily on the rotational tow uh, for this phase. We also have some additional items in the scope of work um, that can help us deal with the on-street towing. I just don't want to get too far into the details because we're presently negotiating the scope of work with the vendor right now. Great. Well, thank you very much. Oh, okay. Yeah. When we when we we all when we saw the letter from the independent towers uh, supporting this legislation is not something that normally we have. Is there any other questions? Seeing none, is there anyone else to uh, testify? Well, if you want to testify, you could come up to the table. Guys, if you want to sit to the back. Before you testify, just state your name and uh, your business, and then you could ask your questions or state your testimony, and maybe we could ask those guys to answer the questions if it's something that's pertaining to them. Yeah, my name's David Winkowski, and I'm an independent tower in the city of Philadelphia. And I have questions about if they bring in another company to run it, what it's not benefiting the city in any way. When we're, us, like I, I'm representing over probably 600 independent tow companies in, in the city of Philadelphia that would participate in the rotational tow system or anything, but it could be ran and like we could run it in a different way of doing it than having an outside company come in and they want to put GPS in your truck and dispatch the closest truck. We have ways of doing it like the other cities do it, where you do it in the areas that the businesses are in. And we can also contribute money back to the city per tow we do and per stores that we charge. Instead of just not costing the city money, we could bring revenue to the city and make the city money doing it. And we can still eliminate the price gouging and the companies that are out there that are doing it. Like, because they're running around in cars and trucks with no names like it's still going to be the situation where if I'm in an accident with my car I'm going to have my own like my own truck come tow it I'm not going to let them tell me hey somebody else can't tow your car because it's going to be a thing I own my own truck why would I let somebody else tow it even in the state of New Jersey and all if you call your own tow truck and they have rotations in their areas if you call your own tow truck they have to let that truck come so it's here, they're not trying to do that. They're trying to dictate everything the person does with everyone's car, and it's not benefiting the city in, in any kind of way. Where us, like I said, we could you could do the fee schedule and put the prices on it, and we can hire um, like an agency, too, just to watch over anybody that's price gouging and all. We can pull their licenses and get them taken off the rotation list. And then from there, like I said, if we charge... $175 hour tow on a rotation, we could kick back $25 of tow to the city. And so, so this way the city can make money, keep the schools open for the kids, keep the libraries open them back up, do stuff for the city. Instead well, we of doing we don't stuff like the term kickback, for themselves. But if, if, if you are willing to work, I mean, right now we have a rotational tow program that's in place. Right. That seems to not work well. Uh, and so with this, 
from what I understand, and we could ask Chris or, or Captain Healy to come up, uh, but from what I understand is that this allows the program to do the rotational tow depending on certain circumstances and feasibility, but that could always be adjusted if it's not working properly. And the fee schedules, I think, could be changed and adapted to what you're saying. Um, maybe we should have Chris, is, is Chris available to come back up? Yeah. Because from my knowledge, they're trying to bring in the auto return. And every tow we do, we got to kick money back to auto return. So they're bet why should they why should an outside company that's not even in our city come in and benefit from us? Okay. When Thank when you. the city more or less should be the one benefit from us. One second. Do you have a question, Councilman? I was just gonna say, well, first of all, sir, I I know we got this letter that we referred to before as Independent Towers and Salvers Association. Do you have an, is that that's another the group? No, that's salvers. not, that's the Salvers. There's only 30, like 20 or 30 companies in Salvers. We have recommended Independent Towers itself that everybody that has a tow license in the city of Philadelphia, and if you look it up, there's over 2,600 tow licenses and businesses in Philadelphia that the rotation would, like if you're kicking money back to auto return and they want to do it their way, it's not, feasible to the people that are doing it because basically what they're trying to say is anyone in an accident if you're in an accident they're going to come say who tows your car and right. the, yeah. but and that's wrong because well, if i own my own car and i have my own tow truck why why do i got to well, pay someone else to tow well, my car? you could deny that service let let chris yeah, answer uh, those questions sure. and then we'll go from there thank you councilman i'd like to just provide a couple more a couple of points of clarity to the comments that the gentleman raised um first of all the dispatch would not be GPS based. Um, the regulations as they currently stand and have stood for roughly a decade require the tows to be dispatched on a rotational basis based on the six police districts. It is not based on who the closest tow is. Second of all, the city presently collects a $15 enforcement fee on every tow that goes through the rotation. We don't envision that changing. Uh, lastly, the goal of this entire system is to make the dispatch process work better and more efficiently, cut time and delays out of the process, make sure participating towers get additional business rather than be passed over or be undercut by people who flaunt the rules, and uh, the fee schedule that this legislation would allow us to implement by regulation would ensure that the vendor would allow, would be able to collect their administrative fee the city would continue to collect its fee, and the towers would not be negatively impacted financially. Okay, I got one, one thing to answer your question. The city does not get a $15 fee now. They never did in the 10 years the rotation been in effect. I've been on the rotation. I've towed hundreds of cars. I never had to pay the city. No, I get the 175 tow and the $25 a day storage. I never had to give the city nothing. Well, I, can, I can say that the $15 fee has been in the Philadelphia Code for many years. And the Philadelphia Police Department has confirmed that they do receive so a portion of the fee. It's they never in section nine six zero five four. They they never receive it from okay. anybody. Uh, we could, I could we, bring in. We'll, every we'll look into that. See, I know where he's talking about the fifteen dollar fee from. I can answer that for him because they're not really looking into it good. That's for the salvagers for every abandoned vehicle they tow off the street and every theft recovery. That they get fifteen dollars from. Yeah. Well, See, they get it for showers, not from the police rotation that's in effect for accident vehicles. Well, there's two separate okay. rotations okay. in I, Philadelphia. I would just ask everybody to look at Section 96054, and the goal of this process to, is to make sure that the city does, in fact, get it, its fee going. All right, well, it'll be implemented into the new process, is what he's saying. So in the new process, they will move forward with that. And, um, you know, there's still opportunity with questions and, and ideas that could be added into this program. As Absolutely. you see, it's sort of being massaged now, as me, we speak. Can I ask you a question? In this hey. program, are we allowed to tow the cars back to our own yard? You are allowed to tow a car to wherever the vehicle owner requests you to tow the vehicle. Okay, but here's the situation with the rotation now. When the people yeah. ain't there and they go to the hospital and all that, the car gets towed back to a yard until they come get it or till their insurance picks it up. So my question to you is, are they gonna be able to be towed back to our yards like they are now, or are they gonna to have to go to parking authority? Or are they gonna to have to go to one big lot somewhere that you're, that's gonna wind up happening? We're not envisioning changing that process as a result of this ordinance. And I believe it still stays the same according to what we've read, that the, the cars, unless the visual person who was in that accident says, I need you to tow it to 
so and so collision right. that has to go there you abide by that you tell it there if there is no recommendation you take it to your yard or wherever you do now okay. and I think that's the process but these questions too and I, I'm sure we could e email us or email the folks Chris could give you the name of the email and the folks to work on this to get all these questions answered because this rotational tow system as even adhered to and, and listened to by most of the people here is not working the way it was intended to work currently. So this gives us an opportunity to fix it and work with the tow operators to give us the ideas necessary to fix it because if it's not working now, we only can make it better. I ha okay, but we have questions. So then here's a question that wasn't, say I'm in an accident, I'm your regular person on the street and my my shop I deal with has their own tow truck. And I'm allowed to call that tow truck to come get me because it wouldn't make sense for me to pay somebody else when I can have this guy for, that owns the shop come get me and it don't cost me nothing. I want to ask, as, as this works, we, again, this bill just gives us the ability, ability to use an app to be able to discuss the policies and the procedures of the app are going to be discussed and thought out during this process. We have time to work with the administration, the MDO's office, and the police to come up with what could work. This gives us the ability. If we don't even have the ability to do this, we don't. Right now, the rotational toe is the way the rotational toe is. Right. State no, your name. No, but my thing is, wouldn't what, it be, I understand you're going to work with the police and the administration, but wouldn't it be better, too, to work, have the people, the independent towers that are, like, have their business license in here besides the salvers, like have their input in it too, so they Absolutely. can put their recommendations? Absolutely, and I think we're, we're suggesting to do that as was the work offline on that, because we're not going to resolve, we're not going to get every answer right now in this right. hearing. There's no way to go through. Right. You have a lot of questions, and they'll have to research them and get back to you with some answers, so we're not going to be able to resolve that today. Because my question is to you, here's a perfect example. If you're in, in an accident, and I'm a family member of you, or I'm the guy that fixes your car all the time. Would you want to pay auto return $175 to tow your car when you could have called me and I could have, could have got it and it could have cost you $50? Right. Well, I think that option will be there in a rotational tow. When they come now and somebody says, I have my buddies coming to tow it, you get to leave. You yeah, well, well, sometimes, sometimes no. It all depends who the officer is handling because they don't understand it. The officers are only told by the inspector, you call rotation, that's it. And I've had situations where I went out there and the lady was like, look, I want to go. I'm only going a block. I'm like, well, we were called on rotation. It's 175 hours to go one block. And she's like, well, I could have called somebody for $50. And the police officer thought, well, listen, we got to call rotation. He's here. You got to pay him 175. And right. then the, the customer's losing if they only have liability well, I and think it comes that, out of their pocket. I think, I think that's something we could discuss and work out on as this uh, project proceeds. Look, I mean, I'm trying to look for the consumer right, and let, the business let, person. Let me, do you want my, to state your name? Yeah, my name is Amwana Swans, and I'm, I'm an owner of a, a company in the city of Philadelphia, a towing service. When this first came out, when I first got into this business 10 years ago, we was going through the same problem. Here we are revisiting the same problem again. Mm -hmm. But this time we had people who passed bills, do not understand how the, how the system really works, and passing judgment. Unfortunately, press gets bad press, oh, tow truck wars and things of that nature, and you guys have meetings early mornings after something that transpired. Well, when you have tow companies that are on rotation, and you'll hear certain salvers get called seven times, and you get called twice a month. That's the, the point, that's the point. But listen, this, this has been going on, this, this is not just a day. Right. The we, problem is two, is, is two things. One, if you're on rotation in the system you guys are trying to put in place, so you're taking authority from the, the, the police allegedly and so forth to say, okay, this is how it's done. They called me for rotation. They sent me to an accident scene, and I beat the cops there. The foot beat cops was walking down the street. I said, I'm looking for the accident. He said, I am too. Let me know when you find it. So now you just had me waste gas to run to a rotation. The cop, that for a side swipe vehicle with no damage, a brush burn along the side, knocked off mirror, you had a driver go to somewhere for a vehicle, was a waste. Oh, we'll put you back on the list. Then you put me back on the list. You send me out to a car that has liability or someone that doesn't have insurance. Now the car sits in my lot. I don't get paid for that car. And only way I can get rid of the car if I get the title from the person or my salvager. 
Yeah, that, and that's part of the towing business, though. I, when I, you're I, in I the business, it. I understand that. Right. But at the end of the day, you guys are taking a lot of. You, you, I get it. It's people price gouging. I get it. Hold hostage. They do a lot of things, but okay, you what we want to do is we want your input. But the problem is, guess what? You're not taking the input. You know why? why? I've been asked for a meeting since the last hearing when it was passed. I've been yeah, denied. Sure. Oh, it's legal issues going on. We can't talk about it, Councilwoman. We, we, we never still met yet. It's been four months. Councilman, we still haven't met yet. It's been four, over four months now. So you're saying you want to work with us? That's not true. It doesn't exist. It doesn't well, exist. I, I've called the, I have called their legal, I have called their legal department, their legal person in their office. Oh, uh, they'll get back to you. Then when you get to them, oh, we can't talk about the situation right now because right now we're in negotiations and there's some legal things going on. So how, how are we working together yeah, right, let us when respond. you're not even allowed us? Let us let, before you start, let us, let us respond. I, I think we've been pretty patient and we have listened to some of the concerns and we're trying to address them. And so, you know, and we've been part of a whole lot of conversations. We acknowledge the system was broken. You guys acknowledge some of the problems within the bad actors. What we're trying to do here today is get to a better place. You guys had issue with the police department. We said we're going to bring in an outside firm to do this. Okay. Whatever. So we're trying to make this better. But we can't be in a negotiation or a discussion with you guys when there's pending litigation. So we told we you guys it? that once you filed the litigation, we couldn't have conversations. And people filed litigation. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a so, question. So I'm not going to go back and forth because okay. we're not, we're no, not going to... We're I have a question for agree. you. Ms. We, we agree that the, prob the, the system has problems. We've agreed that we need to come up with a better system. We went all across the country and looked for best practices. We are at that place where we're trying to put this in place. If you guys want to continue to argue at the whole process because you're not no, getting on, what you want, on. we're never going to get anywhere. No, here's the situation. So we have listened. So I'm not going to take that we okay. haven't listened. Here's the situation. I was around 10 years ago when we, when you were on our side, actually. Mm -hmm. You were on the independent tow side when, you know, Jose from Dirks was on your side. Mm -hmm. So you were on our side, right? Now, it was also when you sat there and Mr. Rizzo at the time sat there and I said, listen, listen to us. We're going to make this rotation work for you. We're going to do it for you. Let us pass this bill. Stop fighting us. Let us do it. Stop putting your input. The same thing you're saying, right? right. We did it. And... They also and said, it got worse. Well, no, they also said, if this don't work, we're going to overturn this. Mm -hmm. Ten years later, now it's worse. And guess what? You're worse. telling us again, you're telling us again, hey, listen to us. Let us do this. We listened to you ten years ago, and it got worse. Okay. So ten it years later, worse. you're saying the same words. Only you're against us now instead of for I'm us. I'm not against you. I'm listen, saying that, you're against unfortunately, us. What I we like don't to litigate do for, the per for the perfect, and we're trying to come up with a system that is fair and third party. Okay with no vested interest. Why do you, you need a third party? The government process. You what? said it. You know, first we start with your, the fear of we're going to put PPA in charge of everything. And let me tell you, there's some people who are okay with that, right? And we said, no, we're going to come up with something in the middle. And that's what we're trying to do. Ain't no tow company here okay with PPA. Believe me, it's even the consumer is not okay with PPA. But hold on. The mayor's okay with Wait, and you say you want to put, you, you keep saying All right, listen, party. listen. New gonna, Jersey... Hold on. New Jersey and New York where can you have you have, your, you have uh, cards that we could disseminate. Give us your um, business cards. We will make sure that we reach out to you on this process. If you don't, you could email me directly and say that nobody has reached out to you. Yeah, I I would like that. All right. Yes. Can you give it to can you give it to the yeah, yeah. Uh, sergeant at arms? Yeah. And because um, a question I have, like New Jersey and New York, they run a perfect rotation. Not they, perfect. No. Now, New Jersey and New York, there's not a wreck yeah. chaser there. The cop put them in cuffs and take their truck. So that's okay. not true. And they don't have a third party in there. All right, well, Check it out. All the returns not in New York, or are they in New Jersey? And they don't ever, you don't ever see this on New Jersey TV. All right, well, thank, thank you for your testimony. Just give, give the sergeant at arms your, your business cards, and we will make sure we include you in the conversation of how this moves forward. So if you wanted to state your name for the record. And yeah, then my name is Brendan Burke. I've been at Private Tower for 25 years, my whole life. First, I'd like to say good afternoon. First, I'd like to thank City Council for hearing us out. Thankfully, we have the opportunity in this great country of ours to do that. The private towing industry has been around in Philadelphia for nearly a century. And with any businesses, 
Nearly a century old, we have faced many challenges and changes. However, this situation we're currently in, with auto return and the parking authority, basically terminates consensual towing, pretty much. <coughs> and makes, in many cases, or forces the citizen into who tows their vehicle, which is a civil matter between two private parties. Free enterprise, free trade, free to decide if the citizen wants to use our services or not. We can't have their decisions made for them by any municipality or governing body. Unfortunately for the private towing industry, we don't have a PR firm. However, countless good deeds are done on a daily basis. I do them myself, and so do many of my other companies, unbeknownst to the media or public at large. Quick examples are relocating vehicles at large fire scenes so they can be extinguished more quickly. We have vehicles, we move vehicles for PGW and gas emergency situations, unlock vehicles that babies and children are accidentally locked in. We pull out police cars, medic units, fire engines, uh, many municipal cars and private citizens out of the snow and mud for free. We as private towers know our industry is far from perfect. However, we ask, we want to be involved with this process if any changes are made. That's all we ask for. Is there a bad side to our industry? Of course there is. I'd say 95% of us are good guys. There's a 5%, like with any industry, that doesn't play by the rules. We just ask that we don't want to be penalized for that 5%. We're honest guys. We're out here working hard, 16-hour days, taking care of our families. We're just asking for an opportunity. That's all we ask for, is to be involved in this proposal with these gentlemen right here. That's all. We want to have a word. We pay taxes. We've been doing this for again, a century this has been done in the city. We pay taxes, we're businessmen, we want to be involved. We don't want the PPA or the auto return to dictate to us, the private industry, what's going to happen with this. We're the ones that have been taking care of this this whole time. Now all of a sudden this outside industry gets to come in and well, take over? I, I think what happened was there were some problems and admittedly by everybody, it, it didn't work the way the intended proposal was supposed to work. So. We're hoping that this will be more fair. With your input, be more fair that this, you can't, somebody has to tell people who's next. Right. And you guys can't decide that on your own. Right. All right, it's not gonna work. So what we have to do is that we need to work with you to hear what your ideas are. We have this proposal, we could show you what the proposal of this, how this rotational toe is gonna work. You could review it, you could look at it and say, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. We need what happens in this case, what happens in that case. Make this the best possible scenario so that when it does go into effect, everybody knows what to expect. Sure. And that's what we want to do. And that's why we asked for a list of names and uh, people we could reach out to and we could have the uh, MDO's office work with, with suggestions. Because it's not even all put together yet of how this is going to play out. It's going to be very similar to what was there currently, except it's going to be as part of an application. And you're not calling the police department to find out who's next on the list. Right. All right. So everybody, you guys will have that app on your phones. And then that app will ding you or however it's going to work. And then we go from there. And then hopefully, at that point, you guys will say, you know what? I know we agreed to this. This isn't working right. You could easily then amend that app to change to do things differently. Right. When, more when, so than when, easily when Frank Rizzo Jr. was originally here, him and now our now wonderful mayor, Kenny, who was a councilman at the time, had discussed about how this rotation would work, but nobody wanted to listen to any of the ideas I had. What do I know? I've only been doing it 25 years. Well, hopefully we learn from that and we'll start you listening know. a little bit okay. because obviously not listening doesn't work. Uh, so uh, Obviously. No, we appreciate it, and we appreciate your testimony because it, it only could help. And we want to get it right, too. We don't want the tellers to be upset. We don't want the constituents to be upset. If there is, you're right. If there's a constituent there and somebody's taking his car and he only wants it to go a block and he's got to pay the same amount of money, can he refuse that? Then does that keep you in an app? It would be able to say, all right, then you get the next tell. But with the police, maybe it doesn't because you've got to go back on a list to get on there. But an app may be able to get you. You go to an accident, and it's a, it's a fender bender. They don't need a tell. Right. So you went there, boom, the app picks up, you didn't tell anybody, boom, you're next. So it, it can't, there is a possibility for this to work in your favor. We just have to be able to work together. I'm just to get making sure there's not walls getting thrown up in places they're not supposed to be getting thrown up at because if you start interfering with people's decisions, this is America. I don't want to sing the national anthem when I'm getting my car towed. You know what I mean? This is America. We I want to choose who chose my, tows my vehicle. If I pay for the vehicle itself, 
I have the title, I have the registration, I pay the insurance, I pay the inspection, I maintain the vehicle, it's my car. I want to choose who tows my car. I don't want some app or this guy or this guy telling me who's towing my car. It's not happening. It's going to cause a, it, it could be a class action lawsuit, or it's going to cause a big problem but eventually. Let me tell you, nine out of ten t people who get in an accident have no idea who to call for a tow. Nine out of ten people, somebody might have AAA, somebody might have friends who tow, but a lot of people have no idea when an accident would happen. They don't even know where their car goes. Sure, and, and this is why I was trying to tell you that in some instances, say if we're in the area or we're there, we want to be able to give that person the choice to use our services that they choose to. And but if it's a uh, rotational tow it would be more fair for everyone. So let's let's get your ideas to the MDO and see how we could work your ideas into this okay. application. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. One more. Hello. Just state your name and then proceed. My name is William Reed. I uh, just got one thing to say. Uh, you guys traveled around and you see how rotation works in other cities. And obviously some cities it works, so you, you just want to dictate that. Philadelphia rotational tow is only for accident towing it's never going to work how how can a person survive off of only towing accidents i can't go and tow anything from a salver from a stolen vehicle nothing like i can't get involved in that they already had that locked down so this whole rotational tow is based on accident towing only other cities their rotational tow is illegally parks it's police impounds, police DUIs, stolen cars. It's all together. It's not separated how this city is. So in order for rotational tow to work, parking authority, we have to tow off the streets because that's a part of rotational towing in other cities. So how can we make Philadelphia work with just towing accident tows only? Well, I think we're starting with accidents, and as my question earlier was... There's parking authority is never going to let us involved well, in no. towing parking cars off the street. No. You go to New York, New York, there's no parking authority. Independent towers tow illegally park cars off the street. That's how rotational tow works. Well, that's something that's going to be a little more difficult to change in, in this process, because they already have the ability to tow on street, the parking authority does. The, the, there is a towing, independent towers do tow, driveways, private property things like that that you could tow. But we can't, us as independent towers, not the salvers, we can't touch a stolen car. It's all salvers. That, we can't touch that. Right. Well, so, I mean, they're, they're decisions and so policies that we have. the rotational tow has to be a whole, not just one entity of towing. Well, that's something maybe we could work on. I mean, we'll, we'll have to discuss that with the, the powers that be, but I don't, I'm not going to say that's going to get resolved today. What we're doing is we're giving the ability to be able to get an app in place that we could then dictate how this app works, how it changes, and how it projects or predicts the next possible tower in the rotational tow process. That's Just if, if you can, anybody who wants to be involved ongoing, please give your name to the Sergeant we, at Arms. We, we, we've been giving our names. And All right, well, we have it here, and, and we'll, we'll forward them to the MDO and see if we can get your information. Thank you all for your testimony. Is there anyone else here to testify on these, on bill number? One seven zero nine. I'm sorry. One seven one zero zero one. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony, uh, Mr. McMonagle. Please read the title of the next bill. Bill number 171006, an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades on a portion of city plan number 271 by striking from the city plan and vacating Llewellyn Street from Delaware Avenue to Canal Street under certain terms and conditions. Uh, thank you. Before you start your testimony, for the record, I'd just like to announce Councilwoman Bass is present for the hearing. Um, I guess, Frank, if you want to start first. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Frank Morelli, Survey Bureau Manager for the Department of Streets, and I would like to offer the following testimony on Bill Number 171006. This is not an administration ordinance, but an ordinance requested by Ms. Hope Hammer of Royer, Cooper, Cohen, and Brumfield on behalf of Mr. Michael Samshek of Core Equity. 
The purpose of this proposed ordinance is to have the street be stricken in order to consolidate parcels and, and assemble land for, for redevelopment. Llewellyn Street is not currently open to public traffic. This action was pre previously authorized without objection, but not completed at the time due to delays in the proposed development project. This ordinance is supported by the Department of Streets and is recommended to your committee for favorable action. Good afternoon, Chairman Squilla and members of Streets and Services Committee. I'm Sarah Chu, City Planner with the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill Number 171006, which was introduced by Council Member Squilla on November 16, 2017. Bill Number 171006 will strike and vacate Luanon Street from Delaware Avenue to Canal Street. The purpose of this bill is to allow Core Equity 3, which owns adjacent parcels on both sides of the streets, to assemble parcels in order to facilitate a redevelopment proposal. New Ellen Street currently is not physically improved nor used as a street. In June 2007, the City Planning Commission recommended for approval for Bill Number 070392, which was identical to the current bill. The City Planning Commission is scheduled to consider the current bill number 171006 at its meeting on December 12, 2017 with a staff recommendation of approval. This concludes my testimony. I appreciate the opportunity to testify before you today and be pleased to answer any questions you may have. Any questions seeing none? Is there anyone else here to testify on bill number 171006? Thank you, Mr. McMonagle. Please read the title of the next bill. Bill number 170998, an ordinance providing for the repeal of an ordinance, Bill number 170203, and the restoration of the intersection of 57th Street and Wyalusing Avenue to the traffic controls existing prior to the enactment of said bill. Good afternoon, Chairman. Squilla and members of the Streets and Service Committee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. My name is St. Martin Torrance. Director of Legislative Affairs at the Department of Streets. I'm here to offer testimony on Bill Number 170998. This bill repeals the authorization and direction to install stop signs at the intersection of North 57th Street and Wyalusing Avenue per Bill Number 170203. Per the request of Office of Councilman Jones, the Streets Department will proceed with the resignalization of this intersection upon passage of this current bill and therefore has no objections to the bill's passage. Thank you for the opportunity to be here for you today. That concludes my testimony. Thank you. Is there any questions? Seeing none, anyone else here to testify on bill number 170998? Ms. McMonagle, please read the title of the next bill. Bill number 170992, an ordinance establishing a no truck parking regulation on both sides of Bustleton Avenue from McGee Avenue to Unruh Avenue. Go ahead, Nick. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. My name is Nick Sinsurik, District Traffic Engineer for the Department of Streets. I'm here today to offer testimony on Bill Number 170992. The Department of Streets has no objections to this bill. We can have the signs for this regulation posted within 30 days. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, anyone else here to testify on Bill Number 170992? Seeing none, Ms. McMonagle, please read the title of the next bill. Bill number 170993, an ordinance establishing a no truck parking regulation on both sides of Unruh Avenue from Akron Street to Roosevelt Boulevard. Please proceed. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. My name is Nick Sinsurik, District Traffic Engineer for the Department of Streets. I'm here today to offer testimony on bill number 170993. The Department of Streets has no objections to this bill. We can have the signs for this regulation posted within 30 days. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Do we have any questions? Seeing none. Anyone else here to testify on Bill Number 170993? Seeing none. Thank you for your testimony. Mr. McMonagle, please read the title of the next bill. Bill Number 171007, an ordinance authorizing a tool, I mean, owner and operator of the new stand located on the southeast corner of North 10th Street to construct, use, and maintain conduits in, under, and across the south east corner of North 10th Street for the purposes of supplying electrical service and telephone service to the new stand under certain terms and conditions. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Chairman Squilla, members of the Street and Service Committee. My name is St. Martin Torrance. I'm the Director of Legislative Affairs for the Department of Streets. I'm here to offer testimony on Bill Number 171007. This bill authorizes a tool, I mean, owner and operator of the newsstand located on the southeast corner of North 10th Street Market to construct, use, and maintain conduits in, under, and across the southeast corner of North 10th Street Market for the purpose of supplying electrical service and telephone service to the newsstand. That the Street Department supports this ordinance. Thank you for your time. This concludes my testimony. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, anyone will say to testify on Bill Number 171007. Seeing none, Mr. McMonagle, please read the title of the next bill. Bill number 171008, an ordinance authorizing Sanjay Haveri, owner and operator of the newsstand located on the southeast corner of North 9th Street, to construct, use, and maintain conduits in, under, and across the southeast corner of 9th, North 9th Street for the purpose of supplying electrical service and telephone service to the newsstand under certain terms and conditions. Good afternoon, Chairman School and members of the Streets and Services Committee. My name is St. Martin Torrance. I'm the Director of Legislative Affairs for the Department of Streets. I'm here to offer testimony on Bill number 171008. This bill authorizes Sanche Javeri, owner and operator of the newsstand located on the southeast corner of North 9th and Market Streets, to construct, use, and maintain conduits in, under, across the southeast corner of North 9th and Market Streets for the purpose of supplying electrical service and telephone service to the newsstand. The Streets Department supports this ordinance. Thank you for your time. This concludes my testimony. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, anyone else here to testify on bill number 171008? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Mr. McMonagle, please read the title of the next bill. Bill number 171013, an ordinance amending section 9-206 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Vendors in Neighborhood Business Districts by creating a special sidewalk vending district on North 20th Street between West Clarkson Avenue and Belfield Avenue and amending section 9-205 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Sales to prohibit sidewalk vending on certain portions of Alney Avenue, all under certain terms and conditions. Please proceed, thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Squilla and members of the Committee on Streets and Services. My name is Rebecca Swanson. I am the Director of Planning for the Department of Licenses and Inspections. Today, I am here to provide testimony on Bill Number 171013 as proposed to be amended, which, if enacted, will amend Section 9206 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Vendors in Neighborhood Business Districts and Section 9205 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Sales. First, we would like to thank the sponsor, Councilwoman Bass, for working with us on the proposed amendments. The bill creates a special sidewalk vending district on the west side of North 20th Street between West Clarkson Avenue and Belfield Avenue. This special vending district will have two permitted sidewalk vending locations. Sidewalk vending will be permitted Monday through Saturday between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. This district complements the special street vending district in the same area which was created in bill number 170905 passed by this committee last month. The bill also prohibits sidewalk vending on Olney Avenue between Church Lane and Ogons Avenue. The department has no objection to this bill and is prepared to enforce its provisions should it become law. Thank you for the opportunity to provide the department's testimony. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, is there anybody else here to testify on bill number 171013? Council, Councilwoman Bass? I just wanted to um, you know, thank uh, Ellen and I for all of their help and work on this particular bill. I think this is going to really do great things uh, for the area surrounding LaSalle University. And so I just really wanted to say thank you so much. No, and thank your office. I, I believe we're meeting with LaSalle in January. Oh, super. To thank get you. this all Very set good. Up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone else here to testify on bill number 171013? Seeing none, that would end our hearing. We would like to go into a meeting. I'd uh, like to... Uh, Call on Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the adoption of the amendment to Bill Number 171013. Second. Uh, bill Number 171013, um, uh, as amended, has been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I have it. The amendment has passed. Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the following bills be reported as committee with favorable recommendation that the rules of council be suspended to allow first reading at our next session of council. Bill numbers 171001, 171006, 170998, 170992, 170993, 171, 171007, 171008, and 171013 as amended. Second. The bills have been read into the record and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I have it. All bill approved with suspension of rules to be read at first council session. That will end our meeting. Thank you.